Hello everyone and welcome to another GIS lecture video and in this GIS lecture video I want to begin our discussion on spatial data models by sort of highlighting at a very high level vector versus raster and talking about sort of conceptually what the difference is between them so then we can dig in more deeply into the vector data model specifically in the next video. So let's say, for the sake of argument, that you were, you're working for the a county government and you're hired as an intern. And as part of the internship, you are given the task of finding the location of every fire hydrant in the county and generating a map that shows those locations. So you are tasked with locating and mapping every fire hydrant in the county. Okay. So we can break this down into two pieces, right? The first piece would be locating. The second piece would be mapping. Now, we talked a great bit about locating in the previous module in terms of how we record locations in terms of X's and Y's or latitudes and longitudes. And I think it's safe to say that hopefully everybody is at least familiar with the concept of GPS in terms of being a way that we can measure the location on a device. So we should hopefully already know how to locate stuff. But we haven't really talked too much about mapping. And we'll talk more about the sort of aesthetics of mapping in later videos. But what we need to do now is figure out, OK, given the fact that we have a location recorded and for the sake of, of convenience here, I'm going to assume that we're doing it in, in Cartesian coordinates. So we should have right an X and a Y for each fire hydrant. Right. This is coming from GPS, which we'll talk a lot more in depth about how GPS works technically in next week's module. But hopefully everybody understands the concept of, hey, we can measure a location of a person using GPS. So we know that we can get the X and the Y recorded as X and Y based on some coordinate system. So we have the location of each fire hydrant, right? This is from a GPS. And I'll make a note that this is week four. It doesn't mean next week's module. But we have the location. So how do we actually go about demonstrating the locations of those um, fire hydrants? Well, we have a couple of options. Right? The first option right, is to generate a map so take a piece of paper right have some origin or take the origin of the coordinate system so over here maybe somewhere we'll say the origin is here so let's make that a different color right this is the origin of the data. And then simply plot the x and the y coordinates. So go some distance along the x, some distance along the y. Right, so this would be hydrant 1. Right, maybe we have another hydrant. Go some distance along the x, some distance along the y. Right, this would be 
hydrogen 2 go right some distance on the x some distance on the y right this would be hydrogen 3 right so if we treat each x and y for each fire hydrant as its own standalone point and we simply plot those points on a map this format this is called vector data where we just simply treat the coordinates as individual points and plot them. Right, this is at the highest level vector data. So let's instead say we wanted to go with the second option. Option two, right? So with option two, what we do is we have our area again. But this time, instead of having an origin and plotting the points, I'm going to do this in a different color, is instead what we do is we take the area, which I've highlighted in, in white here, right, and we break the area up. into evenly sized cells. Right. <clears throat> so you can think of this as a, as a picture, right? Think of this, it, it, at the end of the day, when we talk about raster data, we're actually be talking about what's called images a lot or imagery a lot. So you can think of a raster essentially as like a picture, right? We've, we've taken the area and we've broken it down into some series of evenly sized grid cells. And so rather than taking the X and the Y of each hydrant, let me scroll up just a little bit if I can, so we can see everything, right? So instead of taking the X and the Y of each fire hydrant and plotting it specifically, Instead, what we would do is we would find the grid cell that corresponds to each hydrant, and we would assign that a value, right? So for example, we might have a hydrant here, so we would assign this a value, and we would, so it, would be, it would be filled in, right? We have another hydrant over here, so we would fill this one in. Right, and then we might have another hydrant here, so we would fill this one in. Right, so rather than using the x and the y coordinates of the hydrants specifically, instead what we've done is we found the grid cell that contains the hydrant, and we've said, hey, there's a hydrant in this grid cell, let's differentiate it by giving it a, a value. So maybe the, the empty ones have a value of zero, of zero, right, and the ones that contain a hydrant have a value of maybe one, for example. So this would be a zero, zero, zero. This would be a one because there's a hydrant in there, right, zero, 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 and a one there. So if we go this route instead, where instead of plotting each x and y, like think about like Cartesian a Cartesian coordinate, if instead of doing that, we break the area up into the, a series of evenly sized grid cells and then record the location where the hydrant is in a grid cell with a one instead of a zero, right? This is an example of raster data. 
right? So with raster data, right, break area into series of even grid cells. and change cell value for areas where hydrants are. Okay, so Again, we're going to dig into far more detail, this idea of vector data and this idea of raster data. But I just, at the very beginning, want to hopefully high level see the difference in, 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 a, realistic pro, in a realistic scenario of, hey, we have to find the location of fire hydrants. How might we do that? Well, the first option would be to take the GPS coordinates and literally just plot them, X and Y just like you would in a math class given a series of points. The other option would be to break the area up into grid cells, find which grid cells contain a hydrant, and make them and differentiate them out. Hopefully this makes sense. At a very high level, the difference between vector data and raster data. If this doesn't, that's okay. We're going to go through each of these in more detail um, in future videos. So as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.